Okay. Seeing no one from the public here tonight, we're going to start with the January 13th, 2022 City of Friendswood Planning and Zoning Commission. Regular meeting is now called to order. We will begin the, this evening by receiving any communication from the public or committee liaisons to the commission. Seeing none at this time and seeing that the council representatives have a slot later during communication. Seeing no one from the public, we'll move to the next item. Next on our is our consent agenda. These items are considered routine or ministerial in nature and will be enacted with one motion. There'll be no separate discussion of items unless a commissioner so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting held Thursday, December 9th, 2021? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. All in favor? Motion to approve passed. Next on the agenda are action items. According to the Planning and Zoning Rules of Procedure R 2020-17, all action of the commission shall be made by an affirmative vote of four or more members of the commission present at such commission meetings. Our first action item tonight is, is to consider approval of the preliminary plat of Joyful Park, a subdivision of 7.643 acres, being all of a 7.5765 acre tract and 0.0622 acres of a called 1.735 acre tract situated in the BD Seal and Forwood Survey Number 5, A-625, City of Friendswood, Galveston County, <coughs> Texas. Is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Aubrey, is there a, a staff summary? Yes, sir. Uh, so this is a commercial plat that's going to subdivide a larger tract into two um, reserves for future development and then also um, put their detention pond into a restricted reserve um, to serve those two properties. Uh, the two new lots will front 528. Um, they have a little bit of frontage on Lundy Lane, but the main entrances to them both would be from 528. Um, was, the plat was reviewed by all the departments. There are a few minor um, outstanding items, but you're gonna see this again with a final plat. Um, so there's no reason to hold it up. Um, we are gonna need them to dedicate some additional right away along Lundy Lane. Um, there's an open ditch on that side and the ditch extends into their property. And so we just need some additional right of way so that we can maintain that ditch. And then they'll need no objection letters from the utility companies and to provide an updated title report. But again, no, uh, no deficiencies in the design or details of the plat. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Sasso. Um, <clears throat> I found, I think, what a maybe a technical note uh, or, or, or in the description, we say that um, is, uh, under the summary, you say we're going to separate this into two unrestricted reserves of commercial development, one restricted reserve designated for detention purposes. But on the drawing, the second drawing, it calls all three of them as unrestricted or restricted rather. Um, so it may be a typo on the drawing that needs to be corrected. Okay. Um, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Re restricted Reserve B, is that right? Yeah. We, I think I think it's meant to say Restricted Reserve B instead of Unrestricted Reserve B. Okay. This was just a test to see if we really read the, the, <laughs> the backup. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we can get them to correct that. Um, I have just a question, and maybe it's not important at this time, do they have water and sewer on that property or is that going to be something that uh, they would have to prefer themselves with, with uh, well water and uh, uh, sewage or something of that sort? It's, uh, it's not an uh, issue that's come up right now. I mean, it will come up later on, obviously, but I was just kind of going to get ahead of the curve. Yes, there is water and sewer available in, along 528. Um, they may need to extend it a little bit or possibly bore under to okay, tap the other side. Okay, but it's side. close. Um, I, do, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it is 
it is there. Um, and then when they move to develop the tracks, they'll have to loop the water lines for water quality. So um, it, it is there in the vicinity. Okay. Mr. Matranga drug me across the property the other day, and there is a water well on the property uh, that looks to still be in working shape, looks fairly new. Uh, so that's so why I was thinking there probably wasn't water, but maybe maybe there will be in the future. Yeah, if if our water is available, they're required to tie into that. Okay. And and um, I I uh, I noticed that the, the the lot that they're going to be developing in the future, not at this point, has got a lot of trees, and so they are going to be, it, it. It behooves you to point out to them that there will be an economic penalty associated with clearing that lot much more so now that we've updated the tree ordinance. It looks like it was an old pecan orchard in there, and beautiful trees, a lot of them. <coughs> and um, my personal view is going to be that we need to put a sidewalk along 518. There will be an orphan sidewalk here. 28. 528. But 528, thank you. Uh, when we get to it, and so you might alert the developer that this is going to be, a, at least one person is going to be pushing for a sidewalk along here. We have done a preliminary review on the proposed development, and they have a sidewalk, and they did their tree survey. And oh, okay, okay. They're ahead of the game. I would think the tree survey would be onerous for them uh, because of there's a lot of trees. But may I ask, is it a sidewalk? As long sidewalk? as they factored into their economics, I'm I'm good with it. Is it just a sidewalk on 528, or also on? We need to Lane? need to keep our conversation to the plat. The site plan is not on the agenda for tonight, so oh, just the plat. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just pointing out that point. make sure you remind them so that they don't get surprised by economic penalties that make their whole thing not work. That's kind of what I'm, I have, I have nothing else. Commissioner Hinkley. And this goes on Lundy just uh, right before Tea Party Lane. Is that where this ends? Before There's Tea a, Party Lane? Yeah, that's what it's called on Google Maps anyway. Oh, okay. Back that little uh, tower building or whatever that is back there. Oh, the... There's a little road the right tower. there. The tower, the TV tower. Yeah. Uh, across the street, so to the west of this is the sports park, the city sports park. Yeah, I, I, <coughs> I got that. But going down Lundy Lane, I was just mm. that that cuts cuts right before this road is what I'm trying to get at. Oh yes, sir. Right, be right behind this property is where that communication. Okay, that so TV it doesn't tower cross is. that road. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, and this is already commercial property. This is just being split. Yes. Okay, I'm good. Commissioner Clark. Uh, I have no questions. <coughs> Commissioner Kerner. I have no questions, sir. Okay, Thank Commissioner Perry. No comments here. Okay, my question already was asked, so I have nothing. So unless there's something else, we have a well, we have we, we have to amend our motion. Do we have a motion to approve? Do we need to? Does the restricted versus unrestricted rise to a correction that we need to note? Um, you can amend your motion just for the applicant to make the correction on the designation of the reserves. Okay. Uh, I so move. <laughs> <laughs> Do you so second? Second. Okay. We have a, a motion and a second to uh, approve the preliminary plat with the uh, correction on the drawing for restrict, restricted reserve versus unrestricted B. All in favor? Goes to be unanimous. All right, our next action item is to consider approval of the site plan for a building expansion of the City of Friendswood Public Safety Building located at 1600 Whitaker Drive. Is there a uh, motion? Motion to approve. Second? Second. All right. Aubrey? Uh, so this is the current the public safety building that is currently located at 1600 Whitaker Drive. Uh, the it's a bond project to uh, build an addition to the building. Uh, currently, the building is about 28,390 square feet, um, just a one story, and the proposed expansion will add 9,414 square feet um, to the side of the building closest to fire station number one. Um, it 
the addition is uh, all offices. Um, so they'll reorganize all the offices within the building. Um, it didn't affect parking. They were still, they still meet the minimum parking requirements. And they also have additional shared parking options with the fire station that's adjacent. And um, it didn't, all the landscaping and everything was existing. Um, so it's just the addition to the building. Um, they did a good job of making it look like it's, the addition's gonna match the existing building. So you won't ever even know, I think once it's done, um, uh, that it was an addition, so. Okay, Commissioner Turner, some questions or comments? No, I mean, I, I looked at this before and, and to um, Audrey's point, I think that it's, it's well designed and it's gonna be functional for what the city needs. Commissioner Hinkley. It's uh, somewhat outside of our realm, but just from a budgetary standpoint, is, is it still feasible with current uh, construction rates to, to complete this project? Do what now? With the escalation of, uh, <coughs> of construction costs. Oh, yeah, no, um, actually council approved the contract for it Monday night um, okay. for the contractor, so. Um, and the fire station This one's a little over. Okay. As, this as one is a little over, but the other one um, is a little less. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Commissioner Clark. I have no comments. <clears throat> okay. Commissioner Johnson. I have no comments. Commissioner Perry. Good here. Thank you. Uh, same here. Looks well designed. And I think, Aubrey, you mentioned that it was contemplated when they built the original building. It was contemplated. So I think it fits in very well there. Yeah, there was always a phase two planned for that building, so. Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Those would be unanimous. Okay, next on our agenda are three discussion topics. Uh, first is a discussion on possible amendments to Appendix C, <coughs> Zoning Ordinance Section 7J, Planned Unit Development on the general purpose and description to add criteria to qualify for a planned unit development, decrease the allowable change in land use from 25% to 10%, add an expiration of two years and add standards for revocation. Uh, yes, sir. So the subcommittee met following our last meeting to discuss um, the changes that were brought up. And I think uh, our, our chairman, Mr. Tom Hinckley is gonna go through those. Yeah, so since the last meeting we went through and we adjusted the, um, the percent of change down from 25% to 10, um, just um, we thought 25% uh, change was just quite, quite, quite a lot. 5% was discussed and uh, we've adjusted that to 10% at this point. Um, another thing that we did was change and rearrange the requirements of uh, what will qualify as a PUD. Um, and I believe you'll have a display of that, right? Uh, yes, sir. So we, it was brought up that the, the purposes and the required criteria needed to better align. So we went through them to make sure that they, they would align. And unfortunately, I did not put the whole other sentences in here. But basically, number one lines up with number six of what is not on the screen. Um, I can go through and find it, though. Uh, land has unique environmental features, matches up with... Uh, provide development of sites in a suitable fashion when such development is restricted by such factors as site location and shape. So unique features and location and shape seem to, those two went together. Uh, redevelopment of, or redevelopment or infill development matches up with accommodate innovation in development by modifying the city's land use and development regulations. Transitioning between different and incompatible land uses matched up with, oh, you know what? I'm not sure that my numbers are matching up here. We, we then did a resort. <laughs> we did, I may be looking at the other one because we did resort. But the, the intent. Anyways, I apologize for that. But yes, we did go through line item by line item and make sure that the, the, the purpose of having, of using a PUD does line up with the criteria that's required to um, be approved for a PUD. 
And as a reference point on those, we utilize Pearland and uh, Lead City uh, to help come up with some of these. So uh, the other thing we looked at was the, uh, the utilization of detention areas as retention. So um, that's another change that, that is in here. As far as density goes? Well, so we added the sentence. Detention areas may be calculated as open space only when, in the opinion of the commission, the detention area is designed to act as an amenity. Okay. Good. We'll get back. Uh, yes, yeah, so those were the three concerns brought up at the last meeting. So hopefully we have addressed them. Um, if not, if y'all have more comments, if we need to adjust things, then uh, we can do that again. But once we all get on the same page, then we can take it for public hearing and consideration by council. So just to recap, three major changes. We made sure all of our, our criteria lined up, which I apologize for that, but it does, I promise. We can go back through the, the backup. Uh, increasing, well, decreasing slash increasing the allowable change in land use and the land the land use is commercial versus residential versus um, industrial. So if you have a 100 acre development, 25% is a, is a very large change. Um, so we felt more comfortable with the lower numbers, which five seemed to be too low. 10% uh, is what the recent Avalon development imposed on themselves. And then our neighbors in League City were 15%. So, you know, it, whatever y'all decide on, I think we're in a comfortable range. <clears throat> this, this is a change from whatever the developer uh, brings to us in the beginning. So whatever gets approved that on their recommendation of what they think their layout and land use is gonna be, this is a 10% change from what they design design themselves. It's nothing imposed by us. We're Correct. just saying if you, if you bring it, and then you need to change it. We understand that, but a 10% contingency, basically. Correct. And the, the amendment is mainly, um, and I think it says it in here, it's, you know, we understand market conditions change. So, you know, amendments sometimes are necessary, but it is an amendment from what the developer originally created for themselves. Right. That's, mm -hmm. You said it better than I did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I only had one minor, since no one else is speaking up in the discussion. I had one minor question when you made the change on the detention. Oops. Is it just detention that you're specific? Because there is a difference between detention basins and retention basins. But but you specifically wanted to address detention basins, correct? Is that what you were? So, re or? Re well, retention is going to be wet. So, Normally, right. that, that I guess would kind of be an amenity in itself. Uh, okay. Detention is usually a drive on. Uh, we can uh, amend it if we no, do I, I detention to, and or retention areas. I just wanted to make sure that you thought through that there are two different types of basins that we typically see and that your intention was to talk about just about the ones that drain and are dry normally. I don't think we thought it through that carefully, actually. I think that's a good comment. Yeah, I don't recall that coming up and it's a, it's a good point. Uh, I just think we we kind of made the assumption of the the wet being wet, but uh, that is a good point. What was Avalon considered? That was that water was there. There's <laughs> a retention. Um, and yes. they, they included in the amenity. And any they wet. Made their numbers made their numbers look very good. Right. Yeah, that was part of the reason. Why. Right. And any uh, retention pond is required to have an aeration system, so. Mm -hmm. The hope, fountain, the hope is that they would put a very pretty fountain in there, but that's not necessarily true. Okay. Well, that, when I read through it, that was the only the only comment I had. <clears throat> okay. Well, we can we can wordsmith that one. I was covering all. Yeah. Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, we can we can definitely add that in there. Yeah, I think that's good. No, I think that's good. It just oh, we overlooked that. So. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I think I interrupted you. You were, you were summarizing, you know, some of the major criteria. And I think I, I inadvertently interrupted you, got y'all off track. But was there anything else you wanted to say about what the major changes were? 
Uh, no, sir, we didn't change any of the criteria. We just reorganized them and made sure that they did ma match up with the, the purposes of a PUD. But, but you did require that, they, that a PUD meet at least one of the requirements, of the listed requirements. However, the commission upon recommend, uh, the, the council could require more than one, depending on the circumstances. Correct. So we put that language in there. I, I saw that. Yes, sir. That was in there last time. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. But I just, for the record, it's been a while since we talked about it. I'm just making sure we're all alive. Yes, sir. Okay, so yeah, if you're all in consensus with the addition of adding retention, then we can move forward with move forward with the change. A real hope next time. Mm -hmm. Public hearing and vote. Okay. One more little clarification. I think under the at time expiration, um, yeah. we might need to clarify that if a PUD expires, that basically it needs to be treated like a new application. It says the PUD zoning will remain in place, however, at, and another development plan must be submitted and approved. Um, maybe just clarify that. Similar to a new application, they need to pay a new fee. New I mean, we have to advertise it and um, do the public hearings and everything as, as if it was a new application. Oh, right, we can um, clarify that. The, Yes, because the, the reason. That, but I think. <laughs> no, understood. Um, right. The reason it was worded like that is just because even though the PUD expires, it's still zone PUD. So, but yes, I understand what you're saying. I like it. Okay. Just to expand on that part, too, uh, when we added the expiration date, we also clarified a little bit, and I forget exactly what the final wording ended up being, but uh, for what qualifies as a. Um, has progress on the project, so not just a two-year period. Anything else on that one? Uh, yeah, on? actually, you, you're bringing this up makes me look at it again and think of something maybe a little new. If a PUD expires and they don't want to bring it back up, then what happens? Is it stay as a I would think we need to have something that says if, if it doesn't come back up, if they don't want to renew it, it just died out of a natural death if the whole project fell apart, uh, then it reverts back to the original zoning. So the, we did discuss that. The reason we don't do that is because to change the zoning, it requires public hearings. You have to go through the whole... So, so then you'll have something zoned for a PUD that's not applicable. Correct. It'll be, it'll be zoned PUD on the map, but they have to come in with a new plan to say what that PUD is going to be. We we can't, the city can't okay. go in and revert that zoning back without doing all the public notice uh, required by law. So it's a funny kind of zoning. It would be PUD without a, a, a guideline to say what PUD has. Okay. There's no PUD. Right. Uh, it's just kind of the equivalent of, say, a commercial piece of property. They come in with a plan. They never build the building. They have to come back in with the plan again later, five you years down the road. Okay. 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 The next item is a discussion on zoning ordinance section 7P permitted uses, specifically the annual review of the permitted use table to review and determine if any uses need to be amended. Aubrey, is that in yours? Uh, yes, sir. Um, so this is just basically introducing our annual review to the permitted use table. Um, the zoning ordinance requires us to look at the NAICS code um, every year to determine if it's been updated or not. Uh, that book is typically updated every five years, um, 2017 being the last one. Um, so next year, mm -hmm. we'll update. Um, so but we also just kind of have the standard practice to go ahead and review the permitted use table for the year. Staff usually takes notes throughout the year if we have recurring um, inquiries about certain uses in certain districts. Um, and things like that. And so the one that we did want to put forward this year um, is breweries and wineries. Um, currently, uh, they are only allowed in industrial and light industrial. And so we wanted to consider maybe allowing them in the downtown district or maybe some, some of our, our CNC district. Um, 
we haven't really had any major inquiries for them, but if we did get the opportunity, we would hate to hold up something like that, um, having to change the ordinance. So a little bit of forethought in that. Um, just something to think about. And if anybody has any input to that, um, we can give it tonight, and then the uh, ordinance subcommittee can start um, hashing that out and um, decide what districts that might be best suited. No, sounds like it ought to be considered and looked at. There also, we do have um, our formerly dry area, which is now a limited alcohol area, which covers a large portion of the city. Um, breweries and wineries, uh, it's my understanding, which that all goes to the city secretary's office and TABC, but breweries and wineries in that um, limited alcohol area can only be Texas wines or Texas beer. So they're allowed, but they're limited um, to the types that they can make. So, which we want to support local breweries and if they you know, <coughs> brewed it here in Friendswood, then it's in Texas. So I think. Yeah, I'm missing something. If you're brewing beer in Friendswood, then it's a Texas beer, isn't it? Yes. Okay, yeah. by definition. But they couldn't bring yeah. in somebody else's product out of the matter. Oh, you couldn't then resell right. farm beer. Right. Okay. And so, okay. Well, to go along with what Richard just said, though, so winery, typically they're going to bring grapes in from all over the place. Does that still count as a Texas winery? Um, I, I think it doesn't, I don't think it matters where they get the grapes from. It's just where well, the actual wine is okay. made. It has to be a Texas made <clears throat> wine. Very good. So you can't sell third party wines there, is what you're, what right. you're saying. Yeah. And farm in Texas, Louisiana people. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was the only thing that um, I think we had. If y'all, like I said, if, if, if y'all look over the permanent use table or think of something else, and if the you know subcommittee thinks of something else during the review, um, we could definitely address um, some of those issues. You guys are usually the keeper of the list, and thank you for <coughs> keeping up with that list and thinking ahead. Sure. Uh, I might be. <clears throat> There's somebody um, on the commission that tried to point out from time to time that we are planning and zoning, <laughs> so we need to. Yes. Do more planning from time to time. So yeah. Thank you. Okay, our final discussion item is on Appendix B, Subdivision, Section 15, Variances, uh, to review newly established, or is that right, to review newly established variance procedures. Aubrey? Yes, sir. Um, so with the adoption of our uh, subdivision rewrite um, recently, uh, we now have a variance procedure in place that hasn't um, historic or hasn't been in the subdivision ordinance. Um, we received inspiration from City of Lake City <laughs> in our subdivision ordinance, so um, that's kind of where this is coming from. So we just wanted to go over this since it is a new process, and um, we actually do have our first application um, that will be coming to you soon, probably in February. Um, so just wanted to get this out in front of you and let you think about it. Um, and so that way you can know all the requirements before you actually get um, the submittal in front of you. So um, they said um, the zoning ordinance uh, has a variance procedure, but those uh, requests go to the zoning board of adjustment. Um, so the designated board for variances to the subdivision ordinance is the planning and zoning commission. Um, and it's, uh, so it's a little bit different. Um, so basically, each and every application for a variance um, shall be decided solely and entirely on its own merits. Uh, neither the lack of enforcement or any ordinance or the disposition of any prior or pending application for variance may be considered or allowed to affect any decision on the application in question, and financial interest standing alone should not be justification for the granting of the variance. Uh, these requests will be treated um, like a uh, pretty much like a zone change. So the public hearings and the notice requirements will be the same, um, and the application fee is the same. And when we send out property owner notices, we're going to include a copy of this section um, of the ordinance uh, with the notice, so that people can read the ordinance themselves and be informed. 
so in order to approve a variance, um, it has to be an affirmative vote of at least at least three fourths of the members present and voting. Um, so if we had all seven of us here that night, it would be a six out of six out of seven would have to approve would be required to approve the variance. What's the appeal? I, I read it and I just don't remember. Um, we'll get to that. I'll oh, start then. Please. <laughs> uh, so, in order to, so your criteria to make a decision whether or not to approve a variance um, is outlined in the ordinance as well. So, there's five criteria, which I'm just going to read them directly. Um, so, one is that there are unique conditions peculiar to the subject parcel or tract that do not exist on adjacent parcels or tracts. A uh, strict application of Appendix D, B deprives the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other land in area or land with similar uses. Uh, number three, the variance, if granted, does not frustrate the intent and purpose of Appendix B in community, neighborhood, and other applicable land use and development plans and will not adversely affect property or property values in the vicinity of the subject site. Number four, con conditions supporting the granting of the variance request are not self-created by disregard of, or ignorance of federal, state, or local codes and our ordinances, and the variance is tailored as narrowly as possible while still granting the relief sought. Uh, factors that you may not consider to support granting of variance include, but not limited to, personal and or economic hardship, misrepresentation of property conditions, uses, or regulations by a seller or agent, errors made by a surveyor, contractor, or builder, and increasing the profit, income, or competitive advantage of the applicant, and threats to locate or relocate out of, outside of the city, or cancel or scale back the project if the variance is denied. Um, so the applicant bears the burden of proof um, to basically um, explain you know, why the variance uh, is needed and We'll provide them all that information so they should be able to answer um, you know, all the criteria. Uh, so the decision of the Planning and Zoning Commission may be appealed within 14 days of the decision by filing with the city either the applicant's written appeal or the written request by two members of city council to place consideration of the variance on a council agenda. Uh, council agenda. And then the council would decide the appeal at a meeting not later than 45 days after the date on which the appeal is submitted and may, by majority vote of those present and voting, affirm, modify, or reverse the decision. And then the council decision is final. So there is an appeal process. It doesn't go to district court like CBOA. Um, it just stays with city council. I'm sorry, are we, uh, the city council, if they overrule, is that a super majority as well? Um, just majority of the No, just majority vote. So they need a simple majority while while we need a super majority. Yes. That seems different, but okay. Does the city council have to follow the same criteria as well then? Yes. Yeah, I think they, they would evaluate at that point. Yes. Well, what kind of it's called a subdivision subdivision variance approval and appeal. What sort of things are you thinking about might or that might come up what in your experience might come up here? Um, they should be pretty limited. Um, like I said, we haven't had a variance process in the subdivision orders up until now. Um, so usually um, instances like block length, um, there's criteria already written in the subdivision order for the commission to consider alternates and there's criteria in there. So. I think over the years we've kind of tweaked the ordinance to um, to meet a lot of those requirements. So um, the items I suspect. Well, like setbacks might come up. Uh, setbacks. Um, it could be. Um, but it would be setbacks street, for house for houses street, residential. Yes, it's residential or commercial. Or commercial. Yes. Um, it could be street widths, like right ways. Um, it, it, like anything that's in the subdivision ordinance, um, anything that's in the zoning ordinance, ZBOA, is ZBOA, yes. So it would only be certain setbacks because the regulation may precede 
our front rear side setback, so it wouldn't be at your normal. More to come on that. Yes. We'll do some learning at some point. Yeah, I think mean, like design elements for subdivisions, a uh, little bit, I guess, bigger picture okay. items. Not things like height. No, height is a little different. So one thing that worries me is when you talk, I mean, you didn't use the words grandfather, but if um, you can make the argument that someone under an older ordinance was allowed to do something. Now they're enjoying those privileges, so you can circumvent uh, maturity in our ordinances and not allow something like that. But since we reported it to them, it gets us in a sticky situation. They can use that as justification. Um, so are we required to put that in legally, or? No, I mean, the ordinance has changed, and you know, like I said this is a new procedure, new process, yeah. so you know, we didn't have this. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't make sense to have a process. We just need to learn more about it. I guess that's going to be. Okay. No, I support the privacy. It looks great. Um, I'm just pointing out it's a little sticky when you say well, they can do it over there. Why can't I? Yeah, I, I will point out my bias that without having an example, it's hard to describe. But if we approve a variance, and it's because they have a particular situation, my intent would be to update the code to say when that particular situation occurs. Then they're allowed to do it, and and we can approve the variance to speed things along. But in the meantime, I would update the code so that everyone enjoys the same benefit no, under those same conditions. Right. I hate having just rules to say you got away with it and somebody else may not. Right. And we've used that with um, zoning board of adjustment, especially that's it's zoning variances go into the zoning board of adjustment are a good tool that if you have recurring requests that you need to look at your ordinance right. yeah. and so we've made um, ordinance changes specifically for stairs on right. homes that were in we flood zone and they were right. elevating um their stairs were encroaching the front belt line but they're using existing foundations uh some of them have swimming pools behind them so you know they can't move their house back to accommodate their stairs so we wrote an exception in the zoning ordinance that your stairs are an exception um, and can't encroach the front door line. The so we, it is We've a done tool. That, right? Yes. And yeah. It, yeah. I think that's the right way to do it. To be honest, just so that there's a fair yeah. level playing field for future people who come up against the same situation. Right. What What happens to the actual documentation? So they submit this form, they fill it out, we write it up. Where does it go? We actually record them at the county. It's not being recorded. So it's up to the applicant. It's their responsibility to record it with the county. Um, I, after the meeting, I get the, for zoning board, which and we'll do the same here, I have the chairman sign and attest a document that says, yes, we granted this variance, and then we give it to the, the property owner, and it is, they can either, you know, shred it, stick it in a file cabinet, or if they take it to the county and they record it, which is what they should do, um, then it goes in the official real property records. And the reason that you want them to do that is, you know, granted the city has record, but records don't, sometimes they don't, they don't last or there's, you know, a hurricane or something. But um, when they go to sell their property, if they have um, a setback encroachment or something like that, it's gonna come up in the title report and they're not gonna have a clear title. But if they have that recorded variance document, then it makes it cleaner and easier for them to sell their property without problems. So, and we would do the same thing with the subdivision variance. Um, I've already drafted all the papers and we're gonna be getting all those over to Karen and make sure, you know, our I's are dotted, T's are crossed, that type of thing, but it, it'll be the same process. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm being selfish. And maybe it's a situation where you guys couldn't be this, uh, but I, I don't know how I would be able to track that documentation if I was looking at something down the road and there was a variance 10 years ago. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to find that or even be aware of it, so. I guess we would rely on you guys as we usually do to bring those types of things up. What a long index of DBOA variances <laughs> it's, from the beginning of time. Um, yep, I've been, yes, I have been recataloging them and it is. We're actually wow. cataloging them and we're actually going to map them on GIS. Um, eventually. Eventually. Awesome. So, yeah, she said eventually. Uh, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan.
Yes. But yeah, so subdivision variance, I mean, it is new. When we did the subdivision rewrite, we kind of went, oops, we're missing a section. So we put the variance process in there, which turned out to be really good timing since now we're going to have one coming up. But we'll treat them just like the zoning board. Um, once we, if we start getting the same variance request over and over again, well then by all means, we need to look at the ordinance. But, you know, the intent of the variance is it's a unique situation for this one property. So we'll, you look at them on a case by case basis. So, and we'll give you all the guidelines to look at and something to go off of. So it's, you're not, you're not floundering. <laughs> right. And there's actually a fact finding sheet um, that'll be part of your packet. And so it's a check box, like can you check yes or no if they meet the criteria and it helps you make your decision. But are those records or do we stand behind a single form? What do we do? Uh, ZBOA does a single form, like the chairman. Oh, uh, there you go. So I give, yeah, I give each person, each board member, so commissioner, one of the forms, and you can use it for your voting, but then I only keep the chairman's where he signs it. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or delegates. Yeah. That findings of fact form is attached? Yes, it is in the back of the yeah. And that application is created um, to go for the application of Yeah, our next agenda topic is the consider. Oops, yep, that's it. <laughs> Lost my place. Our, our next agenda topic is the consideration and possible action regarding future planning and zoning commission meeting dates. Back to you, Arthur. Our next regular meeting is Thursday, January twenty seventh, and the first meeting in February will be February tenth. Do you see items coming up coming up that will require those meetings? Uh, yes, sir. Our, our final agenda topic is communication. And we'll start with commissioner updates on their liaison assignments or any general topics. So I'll go ahead and I'd like to start by welcoming Karen Horner, our new <coughs> city attorney, fresh from Baytown as city attorney there. So we're so glad that you're here, looking forward to working with you closely and you keeping us out of trouble. Because sometimes we need it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe more than sometimes. But so thank you um, for coming tonight and being part of our team here. Looking forward to working with you all. Thank you so much for having me. That's all I had. I'll start then. Uh, no CDBC meetings the past couple of months, so no, no status report. Okay. Let's see. The Zoning Board of Appeals met on the 21st of last month, and we had an opportunity to attend that, chaired by Bill Massa. They had one major topic that was of discussion. There was a um, variance request um, to the 25 foot rear yard offset to make that instead 10 foot 1 inches. And that was denied um, by the board <coughs> because it did not meet all of the criteria. So if he was there in attendance as well, she may have some other things to say on that. Um, that was really the only topic. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I do apologize. I, the next um, ZBOA is on the 25th of this month, and I'm unable to attend that. So if someone would like to volunteer to be the liaison, that would be very helpful. I will check, check my calendar. Great. Or Mr. Sasson. Did you say the 25th? Correct. Right. That's a friend? Oh, God. Okay. 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 okay, thank you. Thanks for letting us know. Uh, we did have an ordinance subcommittee meeting uh, prior to this meeting. Uh, we uh, did some further discussion on the garden homes, got some uh, progress there. Uh, we've also started looking at the sign ordinance and um, reviewing that. I've asked, uh, I've asked each member to give a good look through the uh, entire document and, and uh, come up with any suggestions they may have for changes there. If anybody else on the PNZ would like to do that, uh, your input's welcome too. So. Okay. Uh, the uh, drainage district meeting was canceled earlier this week and I'm, I missed the one two weeks before so I'm not sure but it's been a, a while since I've been at one of those so I don't really have anything. W were you there Robert? Yeah. 
Uh, you mean where I'm, it was, they didn't, they were unable to attend. Yeah. They had some difficulties. So anyway, uh, coming up again week after next, I'll go. Okay. And we're honored this evening to have two council members here. We'll start with our, our primary council member, Chris. And I don't have any. Oh, I just came up to listen to everything. Well, we're always Good. glad to have you. Of course. So uh, probably the main thing that you want to know is that we have a the city council commission, the charter review committee, and they've met over the last five months and did a fantastic job reviewing the charter and presented their recommendations to council Monday night. Uh, and after much discussion, we reached some consensus on most, all, well, we reached consensus on all of their recommendations. We're going to follow most of their recommendations <laughs> and probably approve them at the next board meeting to go before the voters. We did not uh, like the recommendation to start paying council members and the mayor uh, a stipend every month. So uh -huh. we nixed that, or, or discussion, we didn't vote. Trish, I noticed you did that and I agreed with that, but you didn't bring up the idea of paying P and C. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in their recommendation. Oh, okay. So, you know, we didn't really decide. Fair enough. That didn't make the first cut. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one was the, uh, there was discussion about the city attorney, who the city attorney should report to. Currently, the city attorney is hired by city council and evaluated by city council. And the recommendation was to uh, move that position under the city manager's office. And the consensus there was, we were gonna wordsmith it, but, and I'm, I'm not sure what will happen, but the consensus was maybe we'll just pass on that one as well. So there were a couple others, there was one about the budget, there might be a little tweaking there. But um, anyway, everybody was in agreement, they did a great, great job. And so we also had a great Christmas uh, holiday celebration in the park with our staff this year. They did a great job trying to address COVID and all the challenges that come along with, with life as it is right now. And then also, sadly, we lost one of our officers, as you probably all know. Mm -hmm. And he was an, an SRO, a, a DARE officer, actually, in our schools for 17 years, uh, highly regarded by our students and our parents and our, our faculty. And uh, it was very sad. He leaves a family, a loving family that really, uh, you know, honored him at his service and uh, will greatly miss him as well as this community and, and our school district and the police department especially. So we're sad about that. But other than that, we're just trying to stay safe and uh, we'll meet again next month. And thank you for all that help and your help. Well, thank you very much, Council Member Hanks. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, Aubrey. Mm -hmm. um, so there was no uh, DRC report in your backup material because we did not have any DRC meetings uh, for the month of December. Um, uh, also, I just wanted to point out another one um, charter change of interest that will affect the commission directly um, will be the proposal to not require second readings of ordinances that require public hearings. Um, so that would, um, for instance, zone changes and in our ordinance changes um, would get through the process about 30 days faster because um, they would do a public hearing with us, our recommendation, public hearing with council, and then just one reading of the ordinance. Um, so that was one of the recommendations that was put forward. So. Um, on March 23rd from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., which I'll send out an email with this later, um, the Texas Downtown Association is doing some uh, webinars and uh, they're fairly inexpensive and it's other cities that are presenting information and they are gonna um, post one about downtown parking. Um, and so I will send out an, uh, you know, just the information to you. If, if we have four people or more who want to attend, um, we may have, to, which we'll just, um, I'll have the webinar up in one of our conference rooms, so anybody who wants to attend can come view it. Um, they are recorded, and we can view them later if you can't make it. Um, so, uh, but anybody, if, if we're going to have four people, we may have to post an agenda um, just right. for a possible quorum. Um, but more about that, so that's March 23rd. It's a Wednesday morning um, from 10 to 11. Next. Okay. 
Okay, with that, the uh, January 13th, 2022 Planning and Zoning Regular Meeting is now adjourned. Thanks, everybody.